HyperPie 2 just dropped yesterday. Now it is available to download, not only for the PC edition, but also the Pi 3 edition. I don't recommend running on a Pi 2 or Pi 0, just because it's going to be way too laggy. It probably won't even run. Uh, for the Pi 3, I love, love, love how beautiful it is. A lot of the music, some people are going to either love it or hate it, but it definitely has a lot of things done for it. For example, the music, the videos, the scripts installed, especially in a track mode, um, their own HyperPi 2 emulation station and a track mode theme. And what I really liked about it was the different views that they now offer, uh, box flow, cover flow, um, horizontal, vertical wheels. And then that attract mode setup with all the options in there is killer. Now, it's not without its hiccups. It's still kind of the first release. I think they need to update some things, especially with their media downloader and the track mode setup. But other than that, I had no issues with this whatsoever. It ran the games. It ran good. So let's uh, go ahead and take a deeper look. But I can tell you right now, it's some cool stuff. What's up YouTube, here we are in Project HyperPi 2. We're in emulation station right now, and make sure you stay tuned because later in the video we're gonna show you track mode. To me, that's really where this accelerates. As far as the emulation station experience, I don't th see anything revolutionary, anything crazy. They just have their own HyperPi theme as you see here. I like the buttons, it looks good. Um, you know, there's some magazine madness, uh, some nice HD artwork, and uh, overall, it takes video snaps and JPEGs. Metadata is on there. As you see here, it looks and runs great. And this isn't anything crazy though, because you'd just say, well, what about just running, installing this theme on a regular uh, image? You, you would be correct. Um, what I've done to this image so far is I've added Neo Geo, Nintendo 64, MSX 1 and 2, Sega Mega Drive, Master System, some MAME, Libretro games, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advanced, Game Boy, and some Game Gear, Game & Watch. I've also done Family Computer Disk System and also Final Burn Alpha. I don't have any Dreamcast, I have my Ataris, I don't have Amiga, but right now this image has about 10,000 games on it. As far as getting your game, the, the Hyper Project HyperPi does not come preloaded. It is going to um, just come with the base image, no media either, but there is a media pack downloader, which I'll get to later. As far as scripts, these are all the scripts you're gonna get, pretty much the standard stuff you'd see in regular um, a track mode, or I'm sorry, in regular, any retro pie. As far as um, pre-installed themes, you're gonna get HyperPie 2, uh, HyperPie 2 with no metadata, Carbon, and Hursty Blue as your main options. But you can download a newer version of RetroPie very easily. As far as what version of RetroPie we're gonna be on, I'll get that in a moment. Uh, the, the base image is 13.8 gigabytes, so it'll fit on a 16 gigabyte SD card, but you're not gonna want that. You're gonna want at least 32 and more likely a um, 64. It's running 4.3.5. You can definitely update this. No problem to update the RetroPie scripts and update the emulators. And let's go ahead and switch to a track mode. So here we are in a track mode. And as you can see, this is a custom HyperPie track mode. Really nice buttons here. Full screen videos. So after you're on the thing, it just comes out full screen. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Let's go ahead and just see what it looks like in regular. So we added a bunch of consoles, so let's go into consoles. And again, remember we added SG-1000, Atari, we did Sega 32X. So one of the systems we did was Nintendo 64, so let's try there. Nintendo 64, cool custom HD videos. Let's click in. And then you have your list of games here. We're in the default view. Pretty cool, right? Well, it gets better because if you go and you hit your left trigger and you go up to controls and you bind your toggle layout button, joystick button five, I have my right trigger right now. So what you do is just go to here, add input and then add it and then go back, back, back. Okay, so let's try it. I'm gonna hit it right now. Okay, so I just hit it. And now we will, now we're in Nintendo 64 still, but this is called the grid view. And we should be able to go between games here, GoldenEye, snowboarding, we go to the right, should keep going, Air Border 64. 
And so you have your grid view, right? If we hit this upper right button again, we'll then move to the next view, which is the vertical wheel view. And as you can see now, the games are on the right side. Pretty cool, right? I like this a lot. A lot of these features kind of remind me of LaunchBox a little bit, but this is for the Raspberry Pi 3. You can see on the left side there, you have a Nintendo 64 cart and box art and logo. And then on the right, you have your metadata. So I'm gonna hit that upper right trigger again, or I'm actually hitting the bumpers. And now we have a cover flow. And when you hit up and down, you could go through all the games. So we're just on All-Star Baseball, hit down again. Now we're on our Marines, go down again, air combat. This reminds me a lot of the iPod when they first introduced the cover flow. So really cool, really cool feature right there. Hit the right trigger again. And now we have the horizontal wheel view. And now again, you're gonna wanna go up and down to switch between your games here. I was stuck on favorites at the top at the, at the moment, that's why. All right, cool. And then one more time, where should that take us? Now we have the cover flow. This one actually reminds me a lot of the, uh, and this is cool because each you know cartridge shows up that's really cool and some of the complaints i heard is it's a little laggy i mean if you're let's just, let's just do like a hard scroll here if we do like a bunch at the same time i'm gonna hit the button a bunch of times all at once so as you can see it is a little laggy but this is running on a raspberry pi i would say the functionality is there it's really the limitations of the pi at this point a 1.3 gigahertz overclock is probably a good idea for this and then now we're back at the vertical wheel view and I think if we do one more. Okay, we have a cover flow with the box art as well. So many different views. Now we're at the snazzy view where it's got a different background and a different way of displaying the videos. How many more views do we have? Okay, now we're back to the default view. So here you go, that's Nintendo 64. We can go back, back into our consoles. We can go back again, and then we're back at the main menu here. Uh, we could do handhelds as well. We installed Game Boy and Game Boy Advance. So let's try that out. Nintendo, let's try Game Boy Advance. Click in there. We should have a fully loaded Game Boy Advance library here. 1,066 games. And it's gonna be the same thing as you saw with the N64. You can change your views with your right trigger once you bind that key. You can also just go through your games very easily. And video snaps. So cool stuff there. Let's go ahead and launch a game, just make sure that works. So there you go, game launches. We're all good. Okay, we can start select out of it and we should just go right back to a track mode. Great. So what I wanna do now is I wanna show you something pretty cool which is the different things that they've added. So let's go down to a track mode setup. All right, here is the attract mode setup. And look at this, you got all these buttons here. Now, first off, starting in the upper left-hand corner, you got the ROM media downloader. Really cool stuff. You go in here, you will need a, compu a computer, a computer, <laughs> uh, a computer, keyboard hooked up for this. And what you would do is before you add your ROMs, you'd go in here and you'd click the systems you want. So I want Arcade Atari, hit spacebar, 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 and then hit enter to download packs. So you do need to hit spacebar to put that little dot in there and then download packs to do that. You definitely wanna do that before you start adding ROMs to your images and it can download all the, all the, um, the pictures and photos for you. If you already have ROM packs with pictures and video snaps in it and they're properly labeled, you don't need to use this ROM media downloader at all. You can just use what you already have. But for those of you that don't have it, this is a easy way to get around that. All right, 
Once you're back in here, you have a HyperPy 2, shows you the dev team, generate favorites, remove favorites, loading screens, reset your track mode, go back into emulation station, set up your audio, your Wi-Fi, shut down, reboot, GPI, reboot, GPIO shut down, information on your Pi, update the track mode, add or remove Bluetooth devices, show your IP address, run command, um, file manager, display settings, all sorts of stuff. So as you see, a lot, a lot of scripts there. So that's nice to see. Here we are back on the main menu. You can get rid of this very easily. And then you got your main themes here. You can go to all displays to see all your displays. You can go to arcades to see our arcades. Um, there's many, many ways to configure this. And, uh, you know, for example, Sony PSP Minis. Sony PSP. So you have a category for all your portables. You can go back. And then you go to computers, and then you're going to have all your computer games, for example. If you go into computers, Amstrad, Commodore 64, MSX 1, 2, 2 Plus. It's pretty cool. Let's go back again. You have your consoles. We've been in here before. You see all your different consoles, all the way down to Nintendo 64, Nintendo PSX. You can go back. Love the full screens. It's going to look beautiful on any kind of arcade or bar top. Final Burn Alpha. Have CPS 1. CPS 2. CPS 3. And then you have all your different collections here of the different arcades. And then lastly, you have a uh, bubble system and Neo Geo. Great system right there, Neo Geo. All right, if we go back. Uh, and then we have collections, hacking, system info, Cody, and theme gallery, and finally exit a track mode. Um, so that's going to do it. This is HyperPy. Project HyperPi version 2. I have to say, um, I'm a fan. I like it. I think the PC edition is going to be a lot better than the... This is all your displays. You can see there's a lot. I think it's going to be way better just because the Pi is limited to all these, cool, all these cool advanced features like cover flow, things like that. It really does lag a little bit. So, um, well, there's a lot of people with their shirts off. Um, so for those reasons, I kind of like the PC version a little bit better. There's definitely improvements here. All those new views, pre-installed scripts, it's not as laggy. The file itself is much smaller than before. So they definitely listen to the users and definitely put a lot of time and effort into this. I think anybody who brushes this off as like, meh, you know, is really not giving this the full benefit of the doubt and really looking into all the hard work that was done here. Yes, there's some devs that move their work around, and I don't see think there's anything wrong with that. Like, if, why would you reinvent the wheel when the wheel is already so great? So, you know, for example, some of this artwork you've seen around before. But, you know, it's besides the artwork, all the scripts, all the custom coding, all the, all the drag and drop with the uh, game lists and things like that, all the metadata already scraped for you, there's definitely a lot of hard work put into this. Now, I'm sure someone's going to preload this with tons and tons of ROMs, and that's the image you're probably going to want. But for those who just want to build their own, start with the base image. This is definitely a good route to go. I would definitely go with Project HyperPi 2 over Project HyperPi 1 myself. So those of you that want to upgrade, I do recommend doing that. There is no easy way to do that, from my understanding. But it should just be drag and drop as far as ROMs and your videos and things like that. So there you have it. That's what I think. Let me know what you guys think. It definitely has its issues. It freezes a little bit, some of the settings. But as far as the actual functionality of once you get your ROMs on there and you're just going between games and stuff, I see no issues whatsoever. Um, I'm going to have to give this uh, a minus. I would have given an A, A plus, but I am having some issues with like the attract mode setup and it crashing occasionally, things like that. But other than that, when it is working, it is gorgeous. Anyways, that's not long enough rant for me. Really good work from Project HyperPi, guys. I really appreciate you guys and what you brought to the table. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.